You're in the kitchen. What's up, everybody? It's Anna and Dylan back for another episode of The Drop. We, we're going to talk about TOC and um, the upcoming tournament in Kansas City. Dylan, how are you? Doing pretty well. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thank you, everyone. You guys are goaded. Um, I guess we should just get right into it um, and talk about TOC. D Dylan, tell all of our devoted listeners about your time in Brigham City. Not with the tournament, you know, just your experience of beautiful Brigham City, Utah. Yes. Um... Utah, I, I, I like Utah. I know, I know, I mean, a lot of players I heard, you know, don't, don't like Utah that much. They think there's not a lot to do around the venue, which is true to some extent, but they did have a really good steakhouse called Maddox that I ate at twice, which is very good. So I was content. That's all I needed was a good steakhouse in town. Um, yeah, it was high altitude, a little windy there, so conditions were, were tough. Points were a little chaotic at times. Um, but yeah, that was a good tournament. I'd play there again next year for sure. Yeah, I like I am I like Brigham City fine. I think I probably do like it more than James, but I really love I love St. George. I love the venue in Red Rock. That would actually be one of my favorite places to play. I really like it there. Um yeah, it was, it was interesting. It was so strange, though, because it would be, at least the first couple of days, not windy. And then it would hit, like, 7 p.m. Then it would get so windy, the wind would pick up. And then as soon as the sun set, tons of mosquitoes. Mosquitoes everywhere. Very strange. So many mosquitoes. James never even gets bit, and he was getting bit a lot. Um, which, you know, sucks for him, but it was nice that, for once, I was not the only one getting bit by bugs, I will say. Um, so... Yeah. TOC. No. Who's your MVP of TOC? Is it Catherine or is it Tyson? Or is it someone else? But I don't really know how it could be someone else. Tell tell us, Dylan. Um I think I think the only other name I would throw into the into the mix there is Tina Pisnik, because she had a great run with Pat, or maybe even Pat too. Uh, making it to the mixed final. And also I know Pat made it to the semifinal in men's doubles and was doing great until he fell on his head. Um, so I'd say those two, those two had a great tournament. I'd say maybe the, the MVP of the tournament, I think would be, man, I think, I think Tyson, I would say was the MVP of the tournament getting the triple crown. Obviously Catherine did too. Neither Ben nor Anna Lee were there. So a little bit easier than if they were there. For both of them, but I think generally speaking, the men's doubles field is just or men's men's field, men's singles, men's doubles is a little bit deeper than the female side. So maybe I give the slight edge to Tyson for for coming out with the triple crown. Yeah, I'd say that's fair. Um, I thought one thing that was one thing that was um, interesting was that it did get windy enough to the point that they had to stop play in one of the matches. So I don't know I don't know what the limit is, but I guess it, what it, what is it like 20 miles per hour it's is, 15 I or it's 20 I don't, and they, yeah and they suspend play yeah yeah which caused but that was crazy that was the first time i had seen that happen it happened in uh riverland yeah. last then, year uh, last march it happened oh really yeah what the but the thing that was funny to me was that the way they measured it was um who was it? i think maybe it was carl or no, Carl wasn't there, so it was someone else. Um, maybe it was Dylan, the new player rep, had like a, a instrument to measure the miles per hour of wind, and he was like aiming it in different directions. And DJ was telling me the story, and like he pointed it one direction, and it was like 17. He pointed it another direction, it read like 26, and it was kind of all over the place. And even though it was over the limit, on some of the measurements, it's it's just the average. So the average, the it's average just, DJ was telling me it was lower than twenty. It's always just the average. It's the same with grit. It's like, what is it actually? Because it's like you could go up high and it could be like a hundred, and then well, not a hundred, but it could be high, and then you could go like right by the ground, and it's gonna read like two miles an hour. So, what's the truth? 
how windy was it? Because I actually thought it got so windy on gender day, like in the last women's match and then in the preceding mixed semi, I was thinking they were going to pull it, you know, but I guess maybe no one asked or complained, but it was windy. It was, it was as windy as it was when they pulled the other, the mixed matches the day prior, but they didn't. Obviously I probably just no one, no one complained. So they didn't check, but I thought it was super windy. Um, and I was surprised that they played a mixed semifinal that night rather than having like me play the bronze. Um, yeah, but all right, let's get into the nitty gritty of the results. Everyone knows this was Catherine and Tyson's tournament, double, triple, um, congrats to them. I don't think that's something I'll ever be accomplishing. Not that I am even saying I'm capable of it, but I have just no interest in playing singles. Even with, I mean, this is another one. Leia's got to be like, shoot. Like, I don't know. I would kind of be like, man, I should have just played two more. I should have played two more. You know, and I would have had a good shot. Um, but I think she's at peace with her decision. But if I were her, I, I couldn't help but have some of those thoughts because it's like, come on. It's like this event. I mean, ever going in, Catherine was such a heavy favorite uh, with, with no one who you really thought was going to push her too hard. You know, always a chance of a loss, but she's so solid, really good at not having bad losses. And then um, women's doubles. I was really excited for this event. I was really hoping Tyra and I would win, but uh, I have to be honest. I thought I was very worried that we were not going to get through the bra shows. We ended up winning 11, eight in the third, but uh Tyra, I think Tyra's biggest issue is her dink quality. Not that she misses a ton, but just that she, they kind of float a lot and uh, just kind of lack of initiation off the bounce, which I told her. And I was worried about the brushes because they're such good dinkers. But we scrapped it out. Then lost to Callie and Elise, which hurt a lot. I was pretty upset after that one. But we got bronze. So still a good day, but it's a little disappointing, but a good day overall. Um, mixed, obviously. <sighs> <laughs> what did you think of that match? So Dylan watched, you watched a lot of that match of me and James losing to Andre and Rachel. Tell me your thoughts, Dylan, on my, my mixed, my mixed uh, yeah, match slash thinking. mixed day. Cause that was my whole day. <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, I was, I was very curious to see Rachel play. Cause I had never sat down and watched her play before. And, uh, I was very impressed with her level in that match. Like she was leaning in and, you know, taking shots out of the air and speeding up. Like she, like a lot of guys do, which was, you know, she wasn't, she was holding her ground at the kitchen line. She wasn't backing up. I thought she played really good. Andre was solid, just super steady, consistent player, uh, has a pretty consistent level of play for the most part. Um, and yeah, I, well, I was talking to Andre after that and he said that Rachel's level in their next match against Zane and Andrew, I think was, not quite as high as it was when they played against you. But when I watched when I watched her play against you guys, I thought she was really solid and, and definitely worthy of a premier premier league spot in MLP. Yeah, it was it was weird. It was definitely a weird like emotional thing coming into that match because I was a little tight about playing Rachel because I kind of picked her. Everyone knows that. And also that was our for James and I are used to having pretty comfortable first rounds. And uh, this is, that was in that match with anything but comfortable. We knew that going in. And, and I think that one thing about James and I, or like when you play with someone that you are close with, like per, on a personal level, I think that freak out compounds a little bit more. Like when one person is freaking out, it kind of, affects the other person. I think the brush has kind of talked about it. And I was actually talking to the Kawamotas about it on gender day. It's like, I don't know. It just, you just affect each other more. Like you're more emotionally connected. And like, yeah, I just think we were both just really freaking out and it just, it just, it was over so fast. And after the match, James was like, that felt like a bad dream. It was like, I just woke up from a bad dream. And I was just, I wasn't that upset right after we lost, but as the day went on, I just got progressively like angrier and angrier. Um, but yeah, I was fine. I still played, woke up the next day feeling better, but I was not happy. I was really unhappy. It was kind of like the day that when we lost in Denver, but that day I managed to just distract myself by going to a concert. But this day in Brigham City, 
There was nothing to distract me. I'm just, I'm just watching. I'm watching like. There was yeah. nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do. I was watching like Andrea and Zane just destroy Rachel and Andre, and then I see like you guys lose, and then like it's like Gabe and Tyra or Tina and Pat, and I'm just like, no disrespect, but I was just like. I was like, oh my gosh, like, come on. I think everyone on the top half of the draw was wishing they were in the bottom half of the draw. Um, just, just, yeah. just, just such a messy, I'm sure you were, I'm sure you were also annoyed, you know, when, when you guys lost, uh, it was, it's about as, as wide open of a, of a the half of the draw could be, it, it was that day and, and, you know, well played by Tina and Pat to capitalize on it. Tell me, tell us about your. Yeah, I was I was pretty upset after. Yeah, how did you distract uh, yourself? It's kind of similar. I mean, well, <laughs> I just went straight to the steakhouse. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know. I was like, I was, I, I was pretty upset after the mixed day because I felt like it, that half of the draw, like you said, was pretty open for anybody that you know played well could have come out on top of that and so um that was that was definitely up there for for like the most upset i've been after a loss that was that was pretty disappointing but it's all good because we play a bajillion tournaments a year so there's always the next one you know yeah it's really true um do you find sometimes that after mixed day it's like you lose and you just feel like you don't even know how to play mixed doubles. Do you ever feel like that? After mixed day? Yeah. I don't know how to play gender doubles. No, no, no. Like, so for me, when I lose um, in women's doubles, I will just, it's just like a level thing. And I'm like, okay, I didn't play that well, whatever, but I don't feel lost. I don't ever feel like, Oh my God, I have no idea how to play the mixed or how to play women's. Whereas on mixed day, sometimes I lose. And I'm just like, I don't even know how to play mixed doubles. Like, I don't even know what to do. It's like, I don't know. I don't know what my, yeah. I just feel lost sometimes after losing a Nick. I'm just curious if you feel the same. Sometimes, yeah, it's tricky. And, that, you know, it's tough to like, it's it's really tempting to just always want to, you know, after a loss, like change your approach and use a different strategy the next game. So, but it's so, I think the key is to, you know, pick with a strategy that for the most part, works for you and, and your partner and then just stick to that even if you had lose a couple of close ones or, or a couple of bad ones you gotta i think you have to resist the urge to, to, to you know dwell on it too long or or force, trick yourself into thinking that you've got to change something i don't know distractions are helpful i think because you can get you can really get caught up thinking thinking about it too much you were saying with rafa right Yeah. So you had you had some distractions. Um, oh my gosh! Every okay. Wait, first, Dylan. You talk about men's. Tell us about your men's day, James. James is a bad soul. <laughs> Tell us about your men's day with Mr. Andre Dias, you, Dylan. Um, it was good. We had a strong start, and then. Uh, Kind of fumbled a little bit in our match against James and Tyson, who obviously went on to to win the tournament. Uh, they were playing well, and we were not at our best. Um, so yeah, it was another kind of frustrating day. But I like playing with Andre. He's a really good competitor. He's and he's and he's a great supportive partner too. And he's you know you're going to get 100 percent from him on every single point. So when I'm not playing with J Dub, he's definitely one of my uh, you know, the first guys I'm going to turn to to play with. Yeah, I, I think Andre's a stellar. I love practicing with Andre because he's always so intense. Um, give us your thoughts on right side, Jimmy. James is probably wishing I would take the sound out of my AirPods right now so you can hear, but he can't right hear you, so you can say whatever you want. Oh, my God, yeah. man, that's so rude. Um. <laughs> 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 <I don't know. laughs> He totally fell for you. Goes, oh my god, what did he say? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, no. Uh, right, right side of James is is good. I know he was a little bit 
I know in the past he's been in his head. Like, I think that was the biggest barrier for James playing the right side was himself. Um, Cause I know that he'd get over on the right side a couple of times and miss a couple of points or, you know, mess up on a ball or something. And then just declare that he's the worst right side player to ever walk the planet. Uh, but once he, I feel like embraced it and, you know, accepted his role on there and kind of figured out, what he needed to do to support Tyson. I thought he did really well with it. Obviously, I mean, they, they ended up winning, but they were playing good together. How did it feel when you embraced the right side role? Were you like, I am a beta male? Or, 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 or just tell, tell me the, tell me, you know, the thought process. Because James has been acting a little differently ever since he started playing the right, you know, embracing the right side role. And I just want, you know, to hear from you. Yeah, I know. We were, James and I were talking. And he's like, "What?" He's like, "What is? What has happened?" He, he said that he wants to be become a right side player, just focus on his right side game for for men's doubles, and just you know, be the beta player, be supportive of whoever he has on the left. And he's like, "What has happened to me as a competitor? Like, why do I want that? Like, you shouldn't want that as a competitor. You should want to be the guy, you know." Um, not everyone's the yeah, guy. It is, a, it is uh, not everyone's the guy, I guess. But it is a tough transition to make if you have been playing a lot on the left because it is a lot different on the right side. If you if you truly, you know, it's different if you're like left-handed and, and stuff. But if you're on the right side as a righty and you are playing the role of like the, more of like the setup guy, like a Colin Johns or you know someone like that, then it is an adjustment to make and it can be tough, but I think for the most part, once you get, once you get used to it and just a lot of reps on that side, it's actually pretty, I don't know, relaxing almost because it's, you know, I don't know. You'd look anything your role is pretty specific there. and outlined. I want Dylan Fraser play. Relax is not the word that comes to mind. Yeah. And you know what? You say it's a tough adjustment. No. James has done it for two tournaments. I don't bronze, know. gold. I think he was built to be a beta male. You might be right. You might you might be a, a beta male. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not. You're not, Dylan, because you're still, you know, you're making more happen than James. But James is just the tightest middle dinks you've ever seen. <laughs> tightest middle dinks. Kill the backhand. <laughs> Are you more scared of James on the right or the left? Would you rather play right side, right side Jimmy or left side James? Um, I guess it would depend on his. It would depend He's on. He's playing partner. with Tyson. I don't know. Um, I think Ty, I mean, I think they're better. I think they're a better team with Tyson on the left and James on the right. There. What about if you and James play together? Who's stepping up? Who's stepping if up? James and I play together. Who's, then who's I would... the right side alpha? Who's, who's playing the right there? I don't know. I think, I mean, I think, I think would, we'd have James on the left because he can roll that. Two handed backhand with the cross court dinks. He can speed up off of it, so he's pretty versatile over there, a little less predictable. Mm. I don't know. I don't know, Dylan. I think I might have to embrace, you know, James is really into this whole right side persona. I think that, you know, who's wearing the first server band come Friday and mixed might be, might not be what people are expecting. So uh, yeah. we'll see. We'll see. Um, Let's see. Anything else? Yeah, I thought I think James and Tyson are such an interesting team with James on the right because if you watch it back, it's like they really Tyson didn't speed up the ball too much. They pretty much just kept the ball in front of James. I think it's really interesting. And yeah, I'll be really curious to see how they do this week. Um I haven't seen oh the men's so they have Julian and Riley early, which I'm very excited for. I hope I'm not playing at the time and can watch that one assuming they get there. It would be a real shame if they didn't get there right after winning gold. Uh but James just said if Julian and Riley get there, <laughs> I think they're gonna get there. 
<laughs> but uh, we'll see. Yeah. Oh, tell me your thoughts on uh, you know AJ and Riley's partnership this weekend. How how you think that went? Yeah, I think uh, I don't know. It's interesting. I think it. I think a lot of their success depends on AJ's level, uh, which is you know pretty volatile and changing throughout the, every single game. So, uh, but they're a good team. They made it to the they made it to the final of this tournament. Uh, who who they in Seattle? Who they get knocked out by? Oh, Julian and Julian and Thomas. But Julian and Thomas were playing really well, and they, and they got yeah. them this time. So. Thought they were playing pretty well. I think they're a funny team to watch because when AJ is not playing well, not only is he not playing well, but he does some real like head scratcher things, you know. And watching Riley just stare at him <laughs> is so funny. Like I watched Riley and AJ lose game one to Mario Barrientos and Garrett Whitehead eleven seven. Oh, it was just it was really funny. It was really funny. And the crowd is going crazy because Mario's from Utah. I don't know where Garrett's from, but uh, that seemed to be bothering them. And uh, it was, they proceeded to win one and one, just destroy them. But that's, I, I, I watched, James has made me watch the men's final games three, four, and five. Um, if I've seen those games a few times at this point, <laughs> and he has probably seen them many a time. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I thought I actually thought AJ played very well in the final, uh, in games four and five. I thought AJ played well. Uh, I thought that Tyson and James largely won the fifth just due to a lot of luck. I thought it was really high level. They got like four net cords and to get up 10 4, everything was going their way. And I was super, super happy for him. I was actually playing the bronze during their match. And so I was, I was really having to focus uh, since our bronze got moved to championship Saturday. But I'm super happy for them on the whole. And uh, it's very sweet. Very sweet first gold. So I guess I'm the problem next, right? I mean, you know, you know what the, losing, you go. Sorry, there's such a delay. Um, no, I was just gonna. Well, first of all, yes, I think you could argue that you are the problem mixed doubles after James' performance in mixed doubles. Yep. Um, but I was gonna say the best, the best AJ moments of. Uh, the best AJ moment of the tournament was in the final. I don't know what game it was, but I know what you're talking about. And they were playing out of court. And and so I think Riley lobbed it up and he was like, it's in, it's in, or get back, get, get back, back, get back, back. defense, you know? And AJ <laughs> proceeded to run. Yeah. Yeah. And AJ cool. ran right, you know, in front of Titan. He's hitting overhead. He's hitting an overhead, like, <laughs> like a foot, like a foot, from, the, a foot like, from the net. It's like Tyson, like, kind of in an Ernie position like he's right there gonna kill it's in the fifth game it's like two two in the fifth and Riley's screaming get back get back and he said like he had so much time to get back so yeah it was just it was really it was, it's funny that you start talking and I immediately knew what you were gonna say I, I immediately knew the exact point and I didn't even see it on means of pickleball it was just so like so funny and just like dude what are you doing this is the fifth game this is not like it's different if this is game three and you've cruised four and five and you're down two zero, but like this is the fifth. So yeah, it's he just just just, just some occasional head scratchers and uh, just Riley reactions just make it so funny. I love AJ, um, but it, it, it's just it's just a funny thing to watch. But yeah, I think they got unlucky um, in the fifth. You know, they were right there. I think James on the right is does present an interesting problem. Uh, just because of how heavy his hands are and uh, and just how there's not really much of a spot on him. So it's tough. I think especially tough for guys who like to pull off the bounce, like Garnett and Riley. Yeah. You know, if you can pull out of the air, it's it's different. But he was really just owning Connor. And against Riley, I think they ended up being pretty much even, but Riley is used to doing much better than even. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting, really interesting tournament. A shout out Tina Pisnik and Pat. I was first impressed with Tina a few weeks ago and uh I need to watch her play women's more but I think she's her dinking kind of reminds me of Jesse's just very slice like lots of slice uh very smooth it just doesn't doesn't look like she misses um so really impressed her and really happy for Pat so happy for Pat real shame everyone's getting head injuries now it's like who do you think's gonna get a head injury first me or you because it feels like they're just going around I know uh, like do we need, we were talking about glasses, but is, is know, it a you, helmet? You, you nearly had one. 
Oh, I did nearly have one, yeah. Tyra got me in the head. <laughs> That's true. Tyra nearly got me. Yeah. Thankfully, I'm so, um, I was going to make a joke like I was smart, like I had a, a big head, but it doesn't make sense for why I wouldn't have gotten a head injury, so just disregard that, everyone. You can make a joke calling me dumb now, too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I think I'll probably I think if, any, if one of us yeah, is going to get one uh, it's me I think so too especially given that you like to get in, way, in the way of the ball what point, at what point was that when, when, when Tyra hit you in, in the head we were up 9-3 serving uh, we had been stuck on we were stuck on 9 forever we were up 9-4 finally okay. got to 10-4 in that game and we lost it but uh, yeah, it was unfortunate. So it could have made a difference. It Getting could have. It could have. You know, if, if I get out of the way and I don't underestimate how fast Tyra is, you know, Callie's also shocked that Tyra's there. Like, maybe we steal the point. Um, playing with Tyra was honestly really interesting because it was pretty much, I was always anxious. It was constant anxiety because I never knew, like, when the pop-up dink was going to happen and then we were going to be in transition, like throwing up lobs. It was also bad to play with Tyra on the super windy when it was super windy on gender day, because we were like with the wind against the brushes and she's like throwing up her lobs, like in the first two rounds. And I'm like on, on this side, like this is, we can't do that. <laughs> it's not going to work um, on this side. But uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was interesting. It was interesting. And uh, we both missed too many high balls in the semifinal that like we were up. Nine four ten four with a ton of like good looks and hands exchanges and just too big of swing, so kind of a frustrating, very frustrating match. But all right, is there anything else to be said about about this weekend about uh, Brigham City? Do you think did we hit it all? I think I hit all the points I want. I have to shout out Graham, Dan, and Travis Redmire. I think Red we hit most of it. Yeah, I have to shout out Graham and Travis though. I was watching them play and it was so funny. And uh, you know, in the match I watched, it was on Travis that they didn't win it. Graham. Graham played a baller of a second game, so Trav, you gotta step up. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> but Graham, Graham, it was super fun to watch. AJ actually texted me like, "Why do you care so much about this match?" And I was like, "I don't know. I just really want Graham and Travis to win." Um, yeah, I think that's all. All right, let's talk about Kansas City. First of all, Dylan, how many people do you have coming to this to this tournament? I've got quite a few people coming. Um, I was in charge of getting tickets for all the Team Dylan Frazier fans that were coming to support. All the, everyone this weekend. I think I asked, like, I got tickets from, yeah, I got tickets from like 12 different people. So I've got like 24 tickets for each day. And I don't think I'm going to use all of them, but um, probably maybe close on a few days. I don't know. I think my mom's got like the list of people that are coming each day. And uh, yeah, the T TDF will be there in, in full force this weekend. I, I was actually, I found it funny and a bit, mm, a bit like just funny and a bit cute how on top of it you were. And so I got a text everyone last Friday Hey, could you send me your Tixer promo code? Is it all right if I still use it for Casey? Last Friday. This is like a week before they're needed. And I was like, Dylan. I was like, oh, Dylan's mom is like on him <laughs> to make sure this is this is done. I'm also like, she sent this text to so many players. Um, and it's funny. Millie asked me if I had tickets. And I was like, no, I don't think James has them either. I was like, you got to ask someone who Dylan doesn't know. Like, Dylan doesn't even know who they are. It's like your only chance. Because I think Dylan has asked everyone. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, anyone Millie would ask, like, you've already asked. I was like, you got to ask someone that Dylan just doesn't talk to at all. <laughs> or the tickets are gone. Yeah, so it was funny. So I'm excited to see. Yeah. Is everyone going to be wearing the stuff? I think I think most of them will have some TDF apparel, yeah. 
Wow. I'm not sure they're coordinating like on color, but they'll have something PDF related. I hope they're wearing the red. I, like I think, red. Uh, or you know, you know, what I think my mom made. I think she was like, I think my mom made some rally flags for all the TDF fans, or something like that. Some flags. Wow. Like or like a rally towel that you know you can like, oh, wave it in the air. Oh, I see, like, I see. That's awesome. Cheer. That's awesome. Wow. Okay. Um. So the big thing that. So how do you feel about playing? Matt and Ben versus Ben and Colin. Yeah, we, oh, I think I like I think I like Matt in place of Colin. I mean, they're going to be they're going to be more of a dangerous team for sure because uh, Matt's got more weapons on the right side than than Colin. But at the same time, maybe more of the points are decided off of Matt's battle as opposed to to Ben's battle because you know Colin's just totally content to sit there until Ben gets a good look and Matt will probably speed up some shots a little sooner than, than Colin would. So I feel like that's a good thing, but I don't know. Could be bad too. Like Matt's Matt's got a great forehand speed up. You know, he, he drops really well. He's got really good hands, so it'll be tough for sure. It's true, but his defense is, wow, very good. It's not Colin Johns. Colin, sometimes you watch him and it's just like, oh my gosh, this guy's so dialed. It's freaking insane. So, I also, I want to see some people drop shot Matt Wright. I feel like I don't see, see enough people like, you know, high ball, drop shot. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying, Dylan. Might be there. Also, if Jada does his little flick log, I think that could be interesting. Because um, how much less mobile is Matt Wright fully healthy versus Colin with the Achilles heel. You know, you know what I'm saying? Just saying. Right. Yeah. It'll be interesting. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. No disrespect. <laughs> that's, that's no, no disrespect. Um, even though that was disrespectful. Love ya. Um, oh, is there anything else really, you know, me, I'm playing with Megan Dazon. This is my first turn with Megan Dazon. I was playing Cincinnati with her. Uh, Annalie and Catherine are going to be really tough to beat. I do not think I'm on their side of the draw, uh, which is always a good thing, but tons of tough teams for Meg and I to get through. So hopefully, hopefully we vibe. Um, I'm excited about that. Hopefully James and I bounce back and mixed. Uh, the mixed situation was a little frustrating with, you know, all the draws, but we have a really, I have a really tough draw. Like I would play Jada in Georgia, not in the semis, but in the quarters. And then Ben and Ali in the semi. So really tough to have Jada and Georgia in the quarters. Um, so that'll be an interesting match. We'll see. Could go either way. Yeah. Middle of a coin flip. Not feeling too confident after this last week. But hopefully we get some reps in and feel a little better um, mentally. Sometimes I feel like I also play better when I'm a little more, when I've just been like significantly humbled. So we'll see. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Do you think we'll see any... Any uh, injuries due to the heat from this tournament? I mean, in men's, I don't, I don't know. Are, are you going to play singles still? Yeah. My gosh, like today, uh, where I was out there, just, and I felt like it was so hot, I couldn't breathe almost. And uh, when I, when James was done playing with you, thanks for not letting me play, by the way. Um, uh, what was I? <laughs> <laughs> So everyone, I mean, Phil Locklear was available. He was balling out today. There was a men. I heard he went for like just a full bag at Roscoe Bellamy's neck. Yes, <laughs> several times. Oh my gosh, no respect. Um, but everyone. So James had a men's game today. Someone backed out last minute. Dylan vetoed me playing. I should have just vetoed him from this. Podcast. <laughs> James, yeah, James is James is uh, does not have a good track rest, uh, record um, in setting up games. At least not that I've been part of. He's often not on time. Often someone else has a conflict come up last minute and they're not able to play. Like when James set up rec, when James set up rec games for us for two thirty, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna show up at two forty five and. We'll probably be able to play then. And then James texts Connor and I, and he's like, 
I'm running 15 minutes behind. I'm like, okay, so we've still got at least another 25 minutes before James is ready to play. Um, but then, then, like, James ended up not being the problem despite his tardiness. It was Jay was uh, got mixed up on the day that we were playing, and he wasn't he was not able to make it. And so we uh, got Roscoe and Phil Locklear. Are you kidding me? So I still wasn't called upon? George. In my opinion, Roscoe and Phil were the two most obvious choices oh after gosh. Connor and Jay fell through. Oh my god, okay. That's cool. Um, you just don't have, you, you don't have Roscoe's right, you don't have Roscoe's Is that what sir. I don't have? That, is that what tough. I don't have, Dylan? The Roscoe's height? good. The height is what I don't have? I mean, it's not, it's not your fault. Like, can't blame yourself. I can't blame you for that, but it's just a fact. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else to be interesting to be talked about this weekend? We've got pretty much everyone is here. Should be fun. Should be interesting. We'll see, you know, double, triple crown watch, but probably more so Ben and Annalise. Rather than Catherine and Tyson. Uh, the last thing we have to talk about everyone, is Dylan, do you want to tell everyone about how badly you scared me? In Brigham City, and then I think that's all. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. So everyone, before Dylan's that was, story, uh, Dylan likes to scare me. The... Dylan scares me not infrequently at these events. Actually, a lot of people scare me because I jump. I'm pretty easy to scare. And Dylan is one of them. So whenever I get scared, I like I don't know who it is, and it's like okay, there's was some number of people, and Dylan is one of them. All right, you can continue. Yeah. I also I like I like scaring a lot of people, but you're definitely among the probably the easiest person to scare. Maybe actually maybe second easiest. My dad's pretty easy to scare too. But um, we were at a at a store getting groceries, Rafa and I. And uh, when I was checking out, I saw James walk in, and I knew that that meant Anna was somewhere in the parking lot since James is unable to drive himself. <laughs> Um, and so while I was waiting for Rafa to, while I was waiting for Rafa to finish up with his stuff, getting whatever he was getting, um, made my way into the parking lot. I identified Anna in the driver's seat of the car, totally unaware of her surroundings. Very vulnerable. I don't even think the door was locked, so just super easy target. Could have gotten mugged. Could have gotten killed. A lot worse. So I decided to, uh, you know, teach her a little lesson on safety. Be aware of your surroundings, you know, and pretty, you know, I wasn't sneaky about it. I just pretty much walked right up to the driver's side door and banged on the window a couple of times. And Anna freaked out. She was super scared and I was super happy. <laughs> he banged on the window so hard, so hard. Like a few days later, I saw the window and I was like, why is it all dirty? Like, what did I do? And then I remember it was, it's just Dylan's grimy handprints from how hard he hit the window. I was so scared. The door wasn't locked. We're in like a random grocery room. That's like Kent's. It's like not even, it's not a tar this isn't a target, you know? So it was a, it was, it was a reminder. And, and everyone, I have to say, you know what was in Dylan's other hand after he scared me? Sushi, grocery store sushi from Brigham City, Utah, from a grocery store no one's ever heard of. I was like, what is wrong with this guy? This guy's insane. And then I proceeded to ask Dylan. Highly if he could recommended use... the spicy crab. Right. Very good. Then I asked Dylan if he could use chopsticks, and uh, the answer was, "Can I use two hands?" So Dylan, you could be a little more cultured. Just saying, could work on that. But uh, yeah, Dylan got me yeah. good. That was probably the worst. For me, a fork has always done the trick. So a fork with sushi, though, I feel like a fork with sushi is kind of like tough. If anything, you just use your hands. Obviously, I mean, it's kind of a that's still the same like pincher motion and everything but uh all right i think i think is there any anything else dylan that we missed i think we i think we covered it all right thank you for listening yeah. everyone you'll catch dylan and i in action this week in kansas city hopefully no one goes down with the heat because it is so hot and there's no wind here it's like not windy it's like 100 from 9 a.m to 7 p.m um, 
And I think this week is all in Prime Video, so I think you can watch on Prime Video, which will be interesting. Um, yeah. Peace out, everyone.